an amazing time. He stood for a very long time. If you do an MTS against a rail, you, you go fast like that. So, next course is Mute City Serial Gaps, which... Oh, yeah. It is... If, if you played this game before, this is the stage that destroyed you. The speedrun killer. It's incredibly... <laughs> I mean, just look at that. There's... It's just bunches of pieces. Like, it's, very da it's a very dangerous course to do. But luckily, I have a way to navigate around that. Gallant Star is actually faster here, but Fat Shark is like way more consistent. Yeah, it's much safer, and I'll try and show off uh, the mind boost. Which is another thing, Gallant Gallant uh, Gallant Cannon or Gallant Star's side attacks are much stronger, not only on the ground but uh, in the air. Side attack dives are like really, really good for Gallant Star. Fat Shark still has pretty good dives, but. Uh, here, uh, Fat Shark for non-side attack play, he d uh, is the better choice. I had a bail. Yeah, you need to hit two mines in the tunnel in order to get the jump on lap one. Ooh, mines, yeah. If you hit a mine, like, dead center, uh, it'll shoot you forward really fast. If you're a little bit to the left or right, it'll just blast you to the side. And, uh, you really don't want that because it costs a lot of uh, health. Should use Silver Piranha on this. <laughs> And uh, the way MT works with mines is that basically you want to hold A the moment the mine explodes and then let go quickly after. Nice jump. That, yeah, that was good. One of the many oh, shortcuts in this course. Yeah, this, this, there's a lot, like, different vehicles will have different shortcuts. Like, Quick Cannon has its, like, and other lighter vehicles can do, like, a weird U-turn. Yeah, Quick Cannon there. can basically fly through, like, half the level. Yeah. Somewhat like that, but more of it. It would land right about here. Good time. Uh, I don't like that course. <laughs> so that was Sapphire Cup. We're about to get to the um, really tough courses now. Yeah, the following two cups are obscenely difficult to play fast. Yeah, especially this course is Firefield Cylinder Knot. This is a very strong staff ghost. <laughs> it, I, I would say this is the best staff ghost in the game. Some people I know will have more trouble with uh, Sonic Oval, but uh, I'd say this is like the best staff ghost all around. It gets shift boosts. Uh, it has really good boost management. It's just a super solid staff ghost. Yeah, it, the staff ghost is Black Bull as well, which I think among non-custom, it has the it, highest off-seat. The speed. highest off -seat. Even amongst custom vehicles, it's like it's like only a couple kilometers an hour behind the mm, highest boost. off speed. Yeah, you can actually get a really strong shift boost at the beginning if you do a quick turn right, but... Yeah, yeah, since you only need to be off the track for like, a, like one or two frames to get a really good shift boost, you can like turn left and right on this track uh, and like, there's a bunch of places where you can get a really good shift boost. Coming up, he's uh, Zewing's probably gonna get one here. Let's see. Nice. Bam! Nailed it. He didn't just get one; he got two. That was a double shift boost. And yeah, yeah. Uh, kind of hard to see the second one. Yeah, it's really hard to tell. Yeah, you you, you just have to look at the speed to tell if you got a single or double. Which is the. Uh, the record on this uh, track, uh, it, there's a side attack dive you can sort of do if you like fly off the cylinder in a weird way and then side attack dive down. It saves probably like a second and a half-ish if you do it really well. But then Brave came along and says like, I don't want to do that and he still smashed the record by like three seconds. Yeah, like right there I just got one, I don't know how. <laughs> that sounds a little loud, doesn't it? Yeah, on the cylinder tracks, it's very hard to uh, maintain control and speed in a lot of places. That's true in max speed, and it's especially true in snaking. It's just like if, you, if you're just a bit too much at an angle, then you just fly off the cylinder briefly, and then you probably lose a lot of speed. Yeah, if you just look at the uh, splits on the bottom, I'm still close to the uh, staff ghost.
maintaining speed over these three bumps is super important if you want to get the shift boost uh, afterwards. Black Bull gets shift boost on these two bumps, but it's better to get a, the shift boost here. Yeah, only one. Hmm. It's also possible to get a, a shift boost by doing an MTS and hitting the curve at an angle. MTS into shift boost. It's possible in a lot of tracks that have like a, any sort of like down slope or curvature. And that was a very good real slide. Hitting 4,000 is what the best you can expect. Yeah. Intersection. Mm. I used to hate this level, but after like getting better at like just uh, turning and MTSing all that stuff, it's I, it's become one of my favorites. Yeah, I don't know if I'll get any of the shift boost, but I'll try. <laughs> this mic is out loud. Mike, it sounds loud. So, uh, it's possible to get a shift boost by like strafing off the track and then back on so you're only in the air for a while. It's also possible to get a shift boost by uh, essentially just driving over a, 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 like, or driving in a tube at a certain angle like this. It's really awkward, mm -hmm. but it's, uh, it gets you a lot of speed. Basically, shift boosts are just like, they occur whenever you're considered in the air for a few frames and then you uh, get back on the track. So that can be any kind of down slope or any kind of edge that you do. Uh, You could have done the MTS on that last banking corner, but without practice, you can die very easily. Oh yeah, this is another level where uh, if you, when you're new to the game, or even just like you've been playing it a while and speed, you're like speed running it, that last turn of this track is brutal. Wow, you got the shift boost at a really low, like, what? Yeah, you can that get was weird. That just was cool. about anywhere. So what he was trying to do was, uh, you could, you can get shift boost all throughout that pipe tunnel. If you, if you are doing, just going at the exact right angle and the right speed, but it's very hard to like chain them all together. Yeah, like, you can't just like, you, you need to like tap left at a very specific angle and to get it right. It's pretty tricky. We got a really fun course coming up now. It's a Casino Palace Double Branches. Double, oh, Double Branches is a good level. Very good level. This will probably be, this would be the first point in the run where I intentionally go for a shift boost. Oh, why'd I do that? This is a this is a really cool uh, course design. It's called Double Branches, and when you look at the map, you'll see why. Like I'm actually going to be completing two laps of this for, per one, but the other one is upside down. The, uh, the amount of speed you have when you hit a jump plate determines how high you go. So doing a shift boost right before the jump plate there let him do a super high jump, which lets him get like a really good dive, which if you utilize momentum throttling as you're going up, 
So you want to hold A as you go move up and then hold A as you dive down. You can get quite a bit of speed. Also, there's several points on this course where if you're going too fast, you will just fly off the course. So, I mean, we do want to go fast, but we also want to survive. It's hard to tell, but for like half of the, of the lap, your machine is upside down. So at those parts where you can lift off, you can po possibly die because you're going too fast and yeah. because you're upside down. This level is actually a giant Mobius ring. I, I like that. I love the MTS on that curve there. It's just look. It's so cool. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure why it even works. But it's just if you do an MTS on that kind of like inside loop, then it's possible to kind of stick to the outside of it, and that allows you to maintain an MTS for a second. When you're going above a certain speed, uh, and, on, and you're on like a upward sort of curve, like the rails just don't collide with you. You don't, like, I don't understand why, but you can just slide against them without losing any energy. Nice MTS. MTSing through that turn is weird because not only is it like a 180 like vertically, but it rotates like 180 horizontally as you do it, so it's like twisting throughout. This is also the only point I usually hit the brake button. It's not a button that's commonly used, but I'd rather like finish the course to fly off. And you want to talk about a... Uh, like yeah, Double Branches is one of the more dangerous levels, uh, just due to the nature of how fast you're going and how easy it is like to lose all your uh, energy crashing into a wall at these speeds. So coming up is Lightning Half Pipe. Um, it gets its name because there's no sides on the course. It's actually a giant half pipe. And we're gonna make use of that feature. What's interesting about this course is that it doesn't have rails on the side for most of it. So strictly speaking, you could strafe on and off the edge back and forth and get shift boost back and back. Um, like a tool assisted run at this level would look absolutely stupid. Um, speaking uh, of shift boost, this one has a very cool setup at the I don't even know, like this has to be the perfect setup for a shift boost. Um, it's really easy to get. But I missed it. Retry? <laughs> you can actually get it every yeah, lap. Yeah, you can get it on boost laps as well. Yeah, which you'll, you'll know if he gets a double shift boost there, because he'll be going very, very fast. Yeah, it's probably worth retrying, but... Uh, that's the big I think so. Yeah, I mean it's quite easy to pull off, but but it's not 100% consistent. You know, I missed one. You can usually get a shift boost if you just go around that corner like that. Um, so this level also has lasers, which if you go through them, you just take damage, but it doesn't actually collide with you. I believe they do the same amount of damage as like the fire pits in chapter 8 and 7. It's just that you only collide with them for like one frame, so it's barely noticeable. So if you're listening, I was actually counting those signs that go past them. Um, I think that's a setup Nick Lear came up with. And I only got a single shift boost out of it. Normally that would turn into a double, 